Hi there, welcome to a well-purposed woman. I'm Elizabeth and today I'm going to show you part one of a two-part series of Valentine's Day crafts. Now these are all crafts that you can make from thrift store or Dollar Tree supplies, but they look very nice and high-end and I hope you enjoy this video. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that red subscribe button so I can continue to make videos and you'll get notified whenever there's a new one. But let's get started on making these Valentine's crafts. This first craft is a yarn wreath. To make this beautiful wreath, you're gonna start out with using one of these Dollar Tree hearts. Cut, cut off the ribbon on the top and then this chunky Chanel yarn, it's about a size seven. And so start by just hot gluing the yarn onto the bottom point of the heart. And then you're gonna cut about 100 to 150 um, inches of the chunky yarn and you may end up using more than this but if you have too much yarn it's a little harder to get it in and out of the heart um, so then all you're going to do is just wrap this yarn around the heart and just hot glue it as you go especially in the spots with curves um, or points the yarn doesn't um, hide the wreath as much but Really all there is to this craft is just wrapping this form with the chunky yarn. And you can use any type of chunky yarn for this, but this Chanel chunky yarn does work, I think a little bit better because it ends up being a little bit fluffier than like a braided chunky yarn or a different type of chunky yarn. So I think that the wreath ends up looking a little bit more full. Um, so I do recommend this type of yarn if you have it or if you want to purchase yarn. I would use this for this type of wreath because it does end up being a little bit more full. But that's all there is to it is just continuing to wrap the yarn and hot glue it as you go around the wreath. So I'm going to speed it up and you can see me do the rest of it. Um, the only, I guess, advice I'd have in making it is if you do want... Um, the yarn to go through a little bit easier. You can just cut off chunks of the yarn as well and then just hot glue it and kind of hide the different starting and ending points and you really can't tell with this yarn again because it is a little fluffier so again it's nice for that. Um, but just go ahead and, and wrap your heart in the chunky yarn and hot glue it as you go. The trickiest part of wrapping the yarn around the heart is the top so just take your time and um, continue wrapping it and then eventually the spaces in between will fill in. Um, you can also spray paint this wreath form before you start just so that there's less gaps in between the yarn. And that would have been smart for me to do but I didn't. It just went right into wrapping. But this is how it turns out. I added a ribbon that matched with the yarn and then just hung it from this old window frame and it looks super cozy and cute for Valentine's. With this next craft, we're going to be making a pillowcase that has a heart on it. And we are gonna be using the chunky yarn and some nautical rope to do this. Um, I have this heart that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna use it as a pattern on my pillow. So with the heart in place, I just took a marker or a pencil or a pen or something to draw around the heart. And next I'm taking this nautical rope that I actually also found at the Dollar Tree and with it I'm just going to hot glue it around the heart shape that I just drew onto the pillow. So just take a hot glue gun or you could sew this in place. Um, I'm just wanting to do it fairly quickly here so I'm just going to use a hot glue gun and just glue around the shape of the heart that you just drew. Now I did just use a pillowcase I had on hand but a inexpensive way to get them is also at Hobby Lobby every other week it's 50% off and you can get these basic ones for around $250. I decided that I want to add some layers to the heart so I actually did a second heart with a nautical rope in the middle and I just hot glued that into place. And the last thing I did was just take this pink puffy Chanel type yarn in between the two layers of the nautical rope and I just hot glued that into place as well. Um, 
I kind of made this up as I went. So the space between the two different ropes um, wasn't 100% um, the same. And the Chanel yarn sometimes fit perfectly and sometimes it was a little short. So then I kind of filled in the yarn and scrunched it up a little bit. I think it would have turned out a lot nicer if it, I would have already planned to do this and had an even space that the yarn, yarn would fit in um, evenly throughout the whole heart. So it's not completely perfect, but it was a fun project and it gave me ideas for future projects and it was free because I had everything on hand already. So it's not perfect, but I like it. And so maybe it'll inspire you to make an even better pillow than I did. With this next project, I used an old bridesmaid dress and these little styrofoam balls from the Dollar Tree. And I used this bridesmaid dress in my friend's wedding. It's a beautiful color and I always thought I wanted to make a project out of it. So I was happy to finally put it to use. Um, I was eight months pregnant when I wore it, so there was plenty of fabric to go around. And I probably, hopefully will never be <laughs> that pregnant in a wedding again. So I figured it was worth cutting it up. Um, but what you're going to do is cut your fabric. So if you do something similar, you can use any scrap fabric that you have on hand or you can purchase fabric just for this project. But I always like repurposing things. And so if you have an old sheet or old dress or something that you're not going to probably use again, this is a great way to use it up. Um, start by cutting your fabric into one inch strips. And with most projects, it doesn't need to be perfect. I didn't measure it specifically. I just kind of eyed it and I cut out strips about one inches wide and then however long your fabric is. And then you're going to cut those strips into squares. So you're going to want about a, a one inch or I actually think mine is probably closer to two inch by two inches and just cut squares out of your fabric. Once you have a good number of them, then you're gonna start attaching them to the styrofoam balls. And what I found worked best is to fold the square into quarters. So fold it once and then fold it twice. And then take your styrofoam ball. And then actually I found a toothpick works best. I used the back of a needle to start with. And the toothpick works so much better. I really recommend using a toothpick. Um, just fold those little squares into quarters. And then you're gonna take the bottom corner of the um, little folded piece of fabric which is not the open side but the closed side where the corner is and just use your toothpick and stick that into the styrofoam ball and you're going to want to put the pieces of fabric fairly close together so that you don't see the styrofoam coming through um, and then just do that all the way around the styrofoam ball um, and you'll get quicker quicker at it the more you do this and it actually goes fairly quickly um, and this would be a great project also to do with styrofoam trees for Christmas. It would be super pretty. Um, it's so easy and the toothpick really gets it into the styrofoam well so that it won't come out um, if you do it deep enough into the styrofoam, which is totally possible. And they turn out really super cute. So just continue sticking the fabric into the styrofoam with your toothpick all the way around the little ball. It's pretty simple and there's not too many tricks or tips with these, they just turn out really cute. You can trim off the fabric when you're done with the ball to get a nice even look, but that's all there is to making these really cute fabric pom-poms and they're perfect for um, lots of different events. So I love these, I'll be making them again and I hope that you like them as well. And the last thing I did was tie the fabric pom-poms onto a piece of twine and made a little banner for Valentine's Day. This would also be cute for a baby shower, a nursery, or a children's room. So I love how it turned out. This next Valentine's Day craft is a ribbon wreath, and I made this one for Christmas. And there is a full tutorial down below um, in the description for this. But I'm just going to show you how I dress it up for each season. So this, like I said, was originally for Christmas. So for Valentine's Day, I just add a couple of little touches that make it look more Valentine-y, I guess. <laughs> And I started by taking this cream farmhouse style ribbon and just stretched it across the width of the ribbon wreath. And then I just took some floral wire and where the red strips were on the ribbon, I attached the floral wire to the ribbon and to the wreath so that the ribbon would stay in place. 
and I did like you could see some of the floral wire after I attached it to the wreath so then I just kind of folded the ribbon over and hot glued it in place and I can show you that later but that just kind of hid the floral wire from the ribbon I found these cute little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree and I can't resist anything that's wooden so I just picked these up and I thought they looked really cute in the center of the wreath so I hot glued the heart on to the ribbon and the heart was a little bit heavier obviously than the ribbon so in order to hold it in place I just turned the wreath around and then I used a little wooden um, dowel that I had also gotten at the Dollar Tree and I just used that to stabilize the ribbon and the heart and I didn't really get this on video but you can see um, the finished wreath how it kind of is a little more sturdy in place and that's because there is a little wooden dowel behind the ribbon but if you like this wreath and you have any questions remember the full tutorial is down below in the description So for this next craft, you're going to start off by using two pairs of Valentine's Day socks and um, you can use mason jars, which I have in this tutorial, but um, basically you can use anything to fill the socks. So if you don't have mason jars, you can just use polyfill or some sort of stuffing to fill the sock. If you do use a mason jars, then you can fill it with different presents for your Valentine. Um, you can use self-care items like these Epsom salts and some foot creams or earrings or anything that you want to put in those mason jars that can be like a surprise um, present. I did this um, mason jar one for Christmas as well, so you may have seen it. But once your um, jars are filled and your socks are on your gnomes, then you're going to dress up the gnome. And I have a pattern below for these hats, um, but basically you're going to cut out the hat and then um, the pattern again is below but just cut out the pattern um, of your hat and then sew a seam down the one sides of the triangle and then just put a little bit of polyfill inside of the hats and this will help the hats to stay upright on the little gnome and once you filled the hat then just go ahead and put it back onto the mason jar and now you can see the basic body of your gnome so now to make the girl gnome we're going to use this chunky braided yarn just cut off a couple of strips of it to make your braids and then you can use a little rubber band to tie off the ends so the yarn does not unravel and then you're just going to hot glue the braids onto the underside of the hat and the last step is to attach the gnome nose so you're just going to hot glue that onto the sock portion right underneath the hat but not touching the hat because you want to be able to remove the hat with these mason jar gnomes um, if you're just using a regular sock that's stuffed with polyfill then just go ahead and glue it in place and that won't matter if it's on the hat or the sock or both you can just embellish the gnome um, with yarn or ribbon or buttons or anything that you would like and since they are valentine's day gnomes then i'm just going to go ahead and put a little heart on this gnome and then another one to match on the boy gnome and then for the boy gnome, we're going to do the same thing with the hat. We're going to stuff it with polyfill and put it on the top of our gnome. And then we're going to take the beard, which we cut out with the pattern below. And we're just going to go ahead and hot glue that on to our gnome. And again, because we're doing the mason jar ones, we're going to keep that separate from the hat. Just making sure that we are gluing these things onto the sock only. And go ahead and glue the nose in place. And then we we'll just add our hat and then just like our girl gnome we'll add a little heart on the corner to make him all ready for valentine's day and the little matching hearts is cute also to make a pair of gnomes i picked up a bunch of embroidery hoops from a garage sale and was eager to use them to start i used a brown acrylic paint and i painted the embroidery hoops with the brown paint to give it a darker look i had tried using some antiquing wax and the hoops were a little bit too shiny so i'd have to have sanded it um, and possibly stained it a little bit and so instead of doing that i just decided to use some brown acrylic paint and paint the hoops with it and give it more of a deeper 
brown look. And then I took some old scarves and a placemat that I had on hand and I used these to cover the embroidery hoops and I my plan was to use um, the scarf for all three of them but I ended up using it for two of the little hoops and just snapped the embroider hoop back on and tightened it to fill the center of the um, hoop. And then I cut around the hoop, cutting off the extra fabric from the scarf. Then I took some vintage lace and just draped it across the hoop. So I opened up the hoop and I put it on top of the scarf and then just closed the hoop back up. And it gave me a great base then to add um, a heart to the center of the embroidery hoop. And I had found a garage sale last summer with some really cool art supplies. And one of the things was a bag full of faux leather. And so I thought that would be great for craft projects, especially this one. And I found this gray colored um, pleathers type stuff that I wanted to use in the center of this embroidery hoop. So I used a heart pattern and just cut out a heart and put hot glued it into the center of this little hoop. And then I just embellished it with a couple buttons and hot glued those in place as well. Another idea for these embroidery hoops is to layer ribbon or lace across the embroidery hoop. And with this largest embroidery hoop, that's what I did. I took some light peach or pinkish um, ribbon and then I used some of this fun boho looking lace and different types of vintage lace and just layered it across the embroidery hoop and then I just enclosed it in the hoop and cut off any of the extras on the back but this is a, another fun way to use these hoops and just like the other ones I took another heart and put it in the center of my hoop embellished it with a couple of buttons and then you can see how they all turned out side by side here they're super cute for valentine's day a little bit different color um, coordination for a valentine's day decoration but super cute and also could be used in a baby girl's um, nursery so um, they're versatile as well but i think i'll use them for valentine's day this year So this next craft is using these conversation hearts um, that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And these are pretty high quality hearts, I gotta say. They're a nice thick MDF board. And so I was really excited to use these. I actually liked the conversation heart look to these for Valentine's Day. It's cute, playful, fun for children. Um, but I had a different idea that I wanted to use these hearts for. So I started by removing the conversation heart um, label that was on the top of these hearts and you can remove any type of paper and glue just by adding water and i learned this really well when we moved into our current home because every single room had wallpaper but once i removed the glue then i painted the hearts with white chalk paint you can see here and i had this cabinet door that was just in my garage and it was a purchase i had made at restore for a couple dollars and i decided just to glue the hearts onto the cabinet door and just using a basic wood glue um, and spreading that on the back of each of the hearts and then i'm just going to place the hearts um, back on the board just like it is now and this will just be a, a sign for valentine's day but then i do have plans to turn it into something else so i'm going to leave it fairly simple but if you wanted to add scrapbook paper or paint the hearts different colors, you could definitely change it up um, and make it the sign more to your personal style. If you like a lot more color, you could add red and pink, paint it instead of the white. But once the hearts were in place, then I just put paint cans on top to weigh them down um, while they dried. And I did have a little bit of glue spill out of the sides of the heart. And I just used a Q-tip to clean it up. And here's the finished sign. As you can see, it's really neutral, but I do have plans for it. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. If you see something on the video that we didn't cover today, we'll be getting to it next week in this two-part series on Valentine's Day decorations. Thanks again for being here. And if you like the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can keep getting notifications when we have new videos available.